This episode of It's All Greek to Me is brought to you by our premium corporate partner, Lavendus Lawyers. Welcome back to another episode of It's All Greek to Me. Today, we're going to tell my in-laws migration story and we're going to cook souvla. I had to do the in-laws migration story, otherwise I was dead. Now I'm standing at the front door. The front door is purely for decorations. Anyone that knows the Greek family, we're going straight to the back. Elate. Ela. Ela, 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 yasa, sa. Ya, 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 we were told we could have a better life here in Australia. That was the main reason why, especially my father. He was the boss, so he was the one that said, right, we're going. In May 1953, we left from Greece. I was only 15 months old when we left to come out here. We were actually sent to this place called Bonagilla in Melbourne where the husbands were actually separated from their wives and their children so they could go out and work and the women were left behind to cook and wash and do whatever for, you know, the children and the rest of the people there too. I come from Greece, I'm Teon Kalamata and I come in 1965. I left Greece because I'm poor with 10 kids plus two of the parents and 12 kids all together. I was 17 and a half when I left Greece. When I left from Greece, I left there. It's my parents and two brothers and one sister. The rest is was here. I came by the boat up to Perth. From Perth to Adelaide, I came with airplane. My sister came from Remak, picked me up, and took me to Remak. For the first month, it's hard because the language. You can hear people, you can understand nothing. But after, because I'm young, I start pick them up and I go to the school night time. When we arrived here in Adelaide, obviously uh, it was hard trying to find somewhere to stay. So there were different Greeks that were really kind enough to say, right, you can live here, obviously paying. And then my father actually found his first job in this sugar factory in Port Adelaide. But one day, as he was on his bicycle, this car hit him. The ambulance comes and actually takes him to a hospital so we go like to hospital to see him too. They've already put him in like a plaster for his back. He had actually um, fractured some of his uh, vertebrae. One day after a month, when we'd gone with mum to the hospital to see my father, she was telling him, we've got no money, we've got hardly any food. How are we gonna get by? Well, what are we gonna do? My dad thought, well, this is it. So he grabs a knife and he cuts the plaster off and walks out with us out of hospital. From there, he ended up going to this place called Metas. He used to polish wash troughs for the laundry and sinks for the kitchens. So he had that right through until he passed away. To prepare the souvla, we light the charcoal and wait for it to turn ashy gray. Then out comes the whole lamb that we had delivered by our Greek butcher. My father-in-law and I have done this many times together and for us, it's become second nature. We stuff cloves of garlic in amongst the flesh to give that sweet flavor and then douse the lamb with fresh lemon juice. It wouldn't be Greek if there wasn't lemon. On goes the seasoning of salt, pepper and rigani and it's ready. The best thing for Sulva is to cook it longer and steady. Small fire and steady, steady six to seven hours, 
Lemi s kam bera kuk steri, no bena me atsai kuk all inside, you know what I mean? That's the best way to do. My father-in-law's olive oil sprayer will outlive us all, I reckon. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> now, we sit down, have an uzaki and wait. These really close friends that we've got in Renmark uh, knew Arthur really well and uh, said, oh, we've got a really good girl for you. So they rang and spoke to my mum and dad, not to me, and said, you know, we've got a good boy. What do you think? And my dad said, yes, I'll ask her and see what she says. So he said to me, would you like to go up to Renmark so you can actually see this boy? I was 17 then. And we decided to go up one weekend where he was actually playing soccer. So we actually got to see one another, not speaking or anything. So it's, oh, what do you think? Well, I don't know. You know, he seems nice. The day there is, to me, is, I go up to the head, high up the top. Yana is beautiful at the time. And as soon as he straight away, I see me, the people we bring there, he says, no, you reckon? I say, yes. Say, you don't want to talk about it? I say, no. I say, yes. So we were invited up to a christening, and that's where we actually spoke. That was August, but then November we got engaged, and then uh, May the 23rd, the following year, we were married. I only ended up seeing him six times from the time that we actually got engaged, and then we were married. Three and a half months after we were married, I was pregnant. And that was the best surprise of our lives. That's what we wanted. We just wanted to have children, just raise them and, yeah, family. You ready? All right, right we, are you ready? Let's, let's go. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> All right. Guys, the souvla's on. The arni is smelling amazing. It's beautiful. Everyone's lining up <laughs> from, 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 from like the other side of town. So we need to go with the lamb. We're going to have to actually make a few salads because that's going to create the acidity. Yes, to cleanse the palate so you can have more lamb. And yeah. you don't need anything else, really. Mate. Don't maybe... overcomplicate things. Well, as I said, well, uh, you know, like earlier before, I said that uh, should you have some vegans as well, then that got something to eat as well. And more lamb for yeah, us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. So we're going to start off with a beautiful cabbage salad that is really fresh. We call it mappa. Yeah. A mappa salad, depending on what part of Greece you come from. And it's basically a cabbage salad. You want to start yeah, slicing yeah. a little bit of the cabbage for us, champ. So, cabbage. Okay, nice and fine, yeah? Nice and fine. Stamata, let me save you some trouble. Here's one oh. I prepared earlier. Hello. <laughs> well, that's a very good idea. Let's let's put this one in here, over here. Okay, let, we'll go in there. Okay, I shall do the spring onions. While Nico's was preparing the, and chopping the spring onions, I'm going to season, and a bit more for good luck, white wine vinegar, or white vinegar. Every good Greek household has these flagonia of olive oil, homemade yeah. olive oil. And you just put a little bit. It's good for you. That's not enough. So that's it's why just, our that's, skin looks so good. That's right. I'm 85, he's 87. I've always, olive oil. I've always been older. <laughs> Let's just chop a little bit of pasta and then we're going to mix that up. So you so chop that there's, pretty there's coarsely. Coarsely and the, and, the, and the stalks a bit finer. Okay. Mantomesa. In it goes, Smell and it's that. a salad. It's, a salad. it's very parsley. fresh. It's fresh. If you have homegrown, fresh parsley. Fresh. I put parsley in everything. Oh. Everything. That's one salad, one salad done, ready to go for your guests. Now, let's do... What? We're what are we make doing? A mermizelli. A what? Mermizelli. What's that? Mermiz a mer mermizelli? <laughs> What's that, like ants? No, no, no. Oh. Mer not mermiglia. Oh. Mermizelli. Mermizelli is a beautiful salad that I have grown up with. In Kalimnos, it is one of our most famous salads. Right. It's a take on a traditional Greek salad. And what we have is our tomato and cucumber yeah. in here. Ordeal. We have a little bit of red onion, the mm -hmm. volume of Now, of course, Kalamata olives. Add some capers. I promise you, try this. It's magnificent. Then, if you have some leftover bread, explain the process, Nick. Well, it's, 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 it's not hard. Some stale bread, don't throw it away. Either use it for breadcrumb or cut up in little pieces, put them in the oven. They're magnificent. Don't burn them. That's the only rule. 
What I do with that is I put them in there for about five minutes. I switch off the oven and leave them in the oven Done. just to dry out. And that way they dry right out and it's a perfect rust. Yeah, you can it, season it if it. you like. Look at that. Perfect. Crumble some of those rustically in there. This just gives a little bit of texture to your salad. So it gives it the crunch, the flavor. And when you put the oil in, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to laugh now. Guess what the next ingredient is? <laughs> a little bit of watermelon. Watermelon goes really, really well anyway, in this salad. Just, just like that? <laughs> no, no. Right. Okay, to... Well, we have to cut Gobse. it. Gobse ligo. Okay. Let's have a look here. Let's cut a little bit of watermelon. We're going to chop up a little bit of watermelon and put it in here. Perfect. In the meantime, I'm going to season. A bit of our salt, a little better. Olive oil. The good thing about the yeah. watermelon the... is the sweet, salty, the combination of flavors is incredible. Exactly. Watermelon, feta cheese together. Watermelon, just halloumi together. Yeah, watermelon and cheese. Like a oh. soft white cheese. Beautiful. So now let's combine this. Watermelon and salty. And of course, we forgot our oregano. Now we're talking turkey. But what we're gonna do is put a little bit of feta. That salata, mermizelli. Try it, another one. And there you have Two salads, the mappa and the mermizelli, made to complement the suvla and everything else we have on the table. I love the garden. When I'm working, because I work for EWS, Esagora, for 25 years, I never have a good garden, you know what I mean? Tomatoes, cucumber, anything you think, I put a little bit of time. Beautiful. Our marriage has been successful for 50 years. Don't you reckon, love? Do you yes, too? Yes, nah. Arthur's going to say communication. <laughs> no, it's not just communication. The no. kids. We have good kids. I'm proud of both of them. That's why we live so long together after. We look after their kids and everything. Yeah, we've been gifted. Very lucky. Yes. What we're doing, you notice, the four quarters are the bulkiest part with the meat. My father-in-law is just putting little bits of charcoal. We slowly feed the charcoal on the side, so it's slowly cooked. Slow cooked, it's gonna fall apart. Perfect. It's just about yeah. there, but we've got to test it. So uh, let, let's pick a little bit so we can try it. This is the way you gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> Suvla is not all about just the food, obviously. It's actually about the gathering. It's very inclusive, like, and that is what comes naturally with our culture um, and a lot of different cultures, the traditions. It's about bringing people into your home and it's like a centerpiece of people being around and enjoying food and sharing their love. So Suvla is the perfect communal meal that, you know what, I've never eaten souvla off of a plate. I always will sit there and pick it and then it's salad time and whatever else is left there after I'm done with off the charcoal. I think it's the best thing my parents ever did by coming out here. I mean, I love Greece, but what Australia has actually offered us, you know, I mean, you can't compare. You just can't compare at all. We've just been very lucky. When I go back to Greece, he said to me, you come back. I say, no, I'm coming to see you. I'm not coming back. To me, it's a paradise here. This is the best country in the world. This is one of the many traditions we have to keep alive. Sinyasa Spidya, see you next time.